welcome back to the boost. So good to be back with everybody. Hope everybody had a nice week. I missed all of you. It was different to start my day without you. It was different. It was most definitely different. Hi, but it's good to be back. It's good to be with you. I this is a part of my day that I look forward to in, in so many ways. And um, not having it makes you appreciate even more. And for those that um, were celebrating Sukkot, I hope you had a wonderful holiday. For those who were looking for the timeless lessons, we tried getting them out, but there were some technical difficulties and the holiday and the whole thing. So uh, there wasn't much going on anyways over the weekend. So it was just a total uh, detach. Um, and so we're back, new season, uh, new focus. Uh, we're in a new world now. For those who are following the Jewish calendar, regardless of your level of observance or even religion, we, are, we have just ended a major piece of, of our focus, which was new growth, new change, huge sort of mental expansion. And now we're into the world of application. These are the times now. The winter, which is the beginning of the season, this is, the, this is real, even though we're in technically fall, we are sort of conceptually in the season of the winter. I don't know where you guys are living, but uh, where I live in the Northeast in New York, yesterday was like 68 degrees and gorgeous. Last night or two nights ago, it was, it was, 65. It was unbelievable. This morning is cold and raining. It's dark. It's winter. We're in winter. And some people hate winter. Some people love summer. What's not to love? What's not to love March, April? Although not this past March, April, but that was a whole different story. That was because of a virus. But typically, March, April, spring, Memorial Day leads you into summer. July 4th weekend. It's just like everyone's happier. The sun is bright. You feel warm when you wake up in the morning. It's earlier. You know, the, I mean, the sun comes out earlier, right? You wake up, it's light. You go into the house, it's light. Now we're entering into the zone where it's getting darker. Where we're feeling it. And now it's starting. We're mid, we're mid to late October right now. It's happening from a calendar perspective. It's happening in every area where we're moving now towards a period of time called fall. And fall, in, in many ways, is just the precursor to winter. And winter is the time where you wake up, it's dark. You go to bed, it's dark. It's the middle of your day, it's dark. Right? You hunker down unless you're living like in California or Florida, where you're like, what are you talking about? Winter is gorgeous, forget that. For the rest of us who live in other parts of this world, this concept that we're entering into winter comes, oh yeah, yeah, Rob, yeah, thanks Rob. Rob just, just, just texted us, it's 85 and sunny, just, just saying where he lives. <laughs> So for those who are listening in all areas where weather is perfect, stick, with, stick in the concept because you don't, you don't have the experiential education happening around you like us Northeasterners over here. Right, 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 exactly. But winter can be the greatest time of year. I have this conversation with my kids every single year. My kids hate winter, of course, like all kids hate winter. And I try to explain to them that Winter is a period of time that can be the sweetest throughout the entire year. Just like this whole virus situation. And I'm not going to get involved with, I heard that the WHO just came out with lockdowns aren't helping. I don't want to get into this world. I don't, want, I don't want the daily boost to be in any way, I don't want to use this word, infected by this virus. Like we have to be virus free when we're together in the morning. I need a space. And I'm sure you do too. That's just like not... We're not getting in this world. 
But when this was happening, we were going down on lockdowns and I spoke to one of my rabbis. He said to me, remember, this can be the sweetest time. Like remember hunkering down the, the winter of our lives, the time where we're not running, the time where we're not expanding, the time when we are focusing, if it's done correctly, can be the sweetest time ever because it's the time where you're building, you're sowing, you're doing the inner work. Winter is a period of time for inner work. What we want to, I want to do here with us together is start to really lay the, the, the grounds of inner work. We spent a lot of time in the past few months on some of the basic concepts, the mind, how it works, speech, how it works, perception, how it works, the shifting and changing of our own minds and how that works, getting down some of the big, the big rocks, if you will, the, the arrows in our quiver, the, the agents of change. We ended the last session, I believe it was the last session, speaking about how speech is the bridge between the mind and the action and how the more our speech has integrity, the more what we say matters, the more we do things, whether it's in speaking or in writing, where when it goes down somewhere, it has to get done, the more the inspiration that takes place in our minds can be married to the action that takes place in our hands because the action can't last. We cannot grow with while being inspired. It's not how growth works. And there's a lot of people that get inspired and don't grow. I know lots of people. We do trips. I've met lots of guys that have come to Israel, gotten completely inspired, came back for the first month and have they, they were ready to make life changes. And I've seen them when I flew into their areas two, three, four years out. And they'll say to me in a private moment, I don't know where it went. Like, I don't know where it went. And the answer is, that's normal. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you for not being inspired eight months after going somewhere. It's just that when you don't have a bridge that connects to the inspiration of your mind, to the long, arduous winter of getting stuff done, the work that allows you to reap and to harvest in the summer and in the spring and in, in, in the early fall only takes place, so to speak, in the winter. The, the real work, that's like if you look at, if you study the lives of great people, they all say the exact same thing. I think this was quoted under Bob Dylan, that it took him 10 years to become an overnight success. But it's so consistent with, every, with everything. If you, if you study the lot people, it is so, if there's one thing that is consistent in everyone's life, people of success all worked for years. For years, and I mean real success. I don't mean like one shot and out. For years, without anyone realizing it. Without any, any spotlights. This happened so many times. People are young. I, and, I, and I watched this because I was this. I just, I was this at a time where it wasn't accepted. Like I was this guy. But when I was this guy, I was working, you know, in, the, in 2000, whatever, right? And, and it wasn't really accepted that young people like dominate. That, that didn't happen yet. Like we didn't have like the flurry of cover stories of someone in their 20s running companies. So when I was like wanting to run the law firm that I started, people looked at me like I had like seven heads. Like, first of all, it's a law firm. Like, chill. Like, we're a law firm. You understand? Like, we don't let you like make photocopies for the first year. Like, forget that. Talk to a client. Like, you're a law firm. This is like structure city. Second of all, this isn't in like 2019. You're a kid. Wait your turn. Like, I was that kid coming out of school, ready to like run the firm, but I was put in my place. But today it's different. A lot of young people are like coming out, like ready to run the world. And some of them can do good stuff. And every time like they ask for advice, I'm telling them, I'm like, get, stand to the covers, man, or lady, woman, just stand to the covers. You're super talented. You really are. Don't run to that spotlight too quickly. Trust me, trust me, just work on your craft. 
work on your craft. Because when the spotlight comes, it's really shiny. And you don't want to be learning on the job. Winter. Winter. Live in winter. Live in winter. Lock those doors and work. Delve. Trust me, summer will come. If you're really good, God didn't give you talent for him not to ever use it. But if you chase the spotlight too much, when you get in it, you're going to realize that you were unprepared for it. And you can see this throughout my history. You can see political leaders. You can see industry leaders. If you study uh, companies a lot, If you study companies, you'll see there's lots of startups. If you really are, comp if you really love and understand business, you'll see lots of companies like on the cover of Inc. and on the cover of Forbes. They're gone now. They're gone. They're gone because they were young. They don't know how to run a company. Not that everyone young can't make it. It's that this idea that the spotlight, the summer is the core and not the winter. It's flipped in the real world, especially in the, in the Jewish wisdom world. Forget it. In that world of Jewish wisdom, the greatest people are, are fighting for winter. They're being dragged into the spotlight. It's a flip. In the secular world, the spotlight is how you determine greatness. You are measured by spotlight. You can, you, you hear people say like, oh, but they have a million fans on YouTube. And that like somehow means that they're like, they're val like as if what they're saying is valuable because there's more spotlight in the, in the, in the world of spirituality, it's the flip in the world of spirituality, the greatest people you, you never even heard of. And when they come out and you read their things or listen to their talks, they're being dragged out. They're being pushed by people because they need more of them. They're not like thinking at night, like, how do I get more viewers? They're not looking for summer. Summer looks for them. It's a total flip in life. It's either chasing exposure or chasing greatness. It's very different. And people make this mistake all the time because they see people that are exposed and assume that the reason why they're exposed, not exposed in a bad way, in a good way, is because they pushed for the exposure. No. A lot of reason why great people are exposed is because they worked on themselves and they, God moved them in the right direction or they had an opportunity that came their way or they didn't necessarily push back, but they were, they, they got something that they, that they properly earned but they were very mindful of winter. And that's what we have to focus on now. This is where we're moving towards. We're moving towards winter. And winter is a time where we go deeper. Deeper. And we're gonna start focusing on together our traits. If you look at your traits, your traits are the prism of how you experience this world, of how you connect to this world, and maybe more importantly, how you shine the divine presence that is within you to this world. All of us have infinite within us. But the difference between something that is buried within and something that is outside you comes through a prism, if you will. And when, light, when the light shines through the prism, it takes on the colors and the thickness of that prism. And if your prism is cleaned and clear, it shines right through. And if your prism is thick and dirty, it shines through. The prism is built up of traits. And if you study the works of some of the great 
spiritual scholars, you will see that what they work on more than anything in the world are traits. Traits like um, enthusiasm, alacrity, order, humility, silence, gratitude, generosity. These are traits that are within us. Sacrifice, discipline, honor, praise, connection. These are, if you look at them in your life, they're, they're nuggets. If you can almost picture that me and you have this incredible glass front. And the glass front is made up of, if you will, tons of little stained glass pieces. Each of these pieces is its own little trait. And all these traits fit together that if they are placed correctly, if they're cleaned properly, if they're painted perfectly, and if they're put into the right spot, when the light shines through, if you will, it creates this beautiful picture that takes place. It's a picture that, yes, it's gorgeous when the light comes through and it hits the blue or the yellow and the yellow changes the room, but can you imagine what it looks like when the light comes through and it hits the entire painting? And it like gives it life. Conversely, it's like what we spoke about with those old movie reels. When the, the little screen, when the little film has the perfect way that it's all designed and the light shines through and it comes out on that screen and it looks so perfect. Everything is thoughtful. It's whoever designed it, whoever drew it, drew it with such precision that as the light shines it, you look at it and you marvel like this is amazing. If you think through the work of winter, we're gonna hopefully with God's help do together, now that we have journaling hopefully down, now that we have the mind to some extent and the, the, the mouth, once we got these big pieces, what we have to do now is we have to start to build this beautiful glass mural, this stained glass window, so that when we put it in front of us, the infinite that is within us that we all have, our, if, our, if, your eyes, if your eyes are open, you've got infinite inside you. And that infinite needs to shine out into the world. And you know, at least I've seen, I'm sure you have as well. We, we all have seen people like this. We can like sense it a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? Is we can like, you can like feel it that when you speak to them, they're just a little different. They're a little bit more in control. You know those people? You know the people when like somebody like says something that is offensive, right? Or insensitive. You know those people that are like, you look at them, they're like totally calm, you know? Like, as if like they're above it because they legitimately are. They're not offended. They're not holding back some, you know, retort. They're just like above it. You know those people? Like in the face of a storm, they're just calm naturally. Not because they were born with it, but because they worked on it. They, that picture, that glass, the light shines through and you just sort of sense it when they speak to you. They're just legitimately happy. They're not playing you. Their eyes don't go behind you because they've spoken to you for 30 seconds at the wedding and now like they're moving on to the next person, you know? You know that person? They're just with you. They're happy. They're not calculating. You know those people? I'm sure we have that inside us some more than others. But to whatever extent we are those people or are not those people, we got to work to become more like that. That's what we're going to work on together. I'm far from it. So I, get, I have you every day so I can work with you and hopefully you can work with me. So we're going to start that tomorrow. 
And let me just sort of begin the process of how, the, oh, that's ready at 9.20. We're going to start tomorrow and trying to figure out how this works. And then we'll continue. But for today, what's so critical is we begin the process of appreciating winter. That's our homework for today, to appreciate winter, to get excited, to hunger to get excited to go deeper, to identify pieces of ourselves that need to be fixed, if you will, and to, to get pumped. Because when you work in a winter, you reap in a summer. All right, it's an honor to be with you. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for being back. And with God's help, I look forward to more. Have an incredible, amazing day. And uh, with God's help, can't wait to see you again tomorrow.